close your eyes and picture what a banned dog breed looks like. I bet you're picturing a big dog with powerful muscles, large teeth, and an aggressive temperament. Not one of the softest, most gentle dog breeds out there. But this is actually one of the two dog breeds that Norway has recently banned, with more countries threatening to follow suit and more dog breeds likely to be affected. And the issues this raises affects all dog lovers, no matter what breed you have and where in the world you live. Hi, I'm veterinarian Dr. Alex. This is Our Pets Health, and I want to help you understand your dog so that they can live the full and happy, comfortable life you want for them. So the two dog breeds that Norway have banned are the British Bulldog and the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Now, they've banned them because the health problems that they come with when they're born are so ingrained that virtually every single dog is considered unhealthy. And that is contrary to the welfare laws in Norway. We cannot be breeding dogs that are destined to suffer. Now, rather than ban these breeds completely and removing all of their um, all of their examples from the country. They've actually put a ban on breeding, so no one can breed purebred English bulldogs or Cavalier King Charles spaniels in Norway. Now that might seem really excessive. You might say, well, why don't we just breed healthier versions of these dogs and improve the genetics within the breed itself rather than mixing uh, crossbreeds, other dog breeds with the English Bulldog or the Cavalier King Charles to improve their health. But I quote, for these breeds, it is literally impossible to improve the breed within the remaining gene pool. And what this means is that these guys are so inbred that their genetic diversity is so poor that if we just use the genetics within the existing breed, there is very little to no chance of improving the health of these dogs. And if we think about it, that's actually not an unreasonable suggestion should we inherently be breeding dogs that are destined to suffer, that are going to be suffering from high incidences of genetic diseases because of the way that we as people want them to look and have selected them over the years, over the generations to produce these desirable characteristics. I mean, the result in these two breeds especially has been tragic. If we take the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, you know, over 30% of them go on to develop heart failure and die because of leaky heart valves. Their skulls are too small and bulge at the back of their brain, uh, resulting in something called syringomyelia, which is incredibly painful and can even lead to paralysis, as well as just that chronic pain that they're living with. We get skinfold pyoderma, we have eye problems, breathing difficulty. With that shorter nose comes brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome, where they literally are struggling to to breathe a lot of the time. They have slipping kneecaps because of their conformation, the way their legs are formed. With the bulldog, the English bulldog, things are not any better. They have massive joint problems. They have even worse issues with this brachycephalic obstructive airway syndrome. The, the problem with the breeding of this short-nosed dog breeds, and this is any short-nosed dog breed, is that that skull has shrunk, but actually the amount of soft tissue, so gum and soft palate um, and tissue within the throat has not reduced. So that's all shoved and crammed into a smaller area, which as you can imagine, makes it much narrower and they struggle to breathe. We have huge numbers of eye problems in our English Bulldogs. They get entropion, they get something called cherry eye. They're more likely to develop ulceration. They get skin fold pyoderma, just those creases, those folds of their skin um, you know, on their face, often around their tail, that corkscrew tail, also means that they get those deep, these really deep, horrible, moist infections that are incredibly irritating, incredibly painful. Their twisted front legs and their back legs means that they're prone to arthritis. You know, they're just an absolute disaster waiting to happen. And that really is the problem. And if that wasn't bad enough. The life expectancy for our English Bulldogs is a tiny 7.4 years on average. And that compares to the average of 11.2 years across all dog breeds. So not only are they struggling and suffering during their lifetime, they're really not living very long at all. So that's all very well, Dr. Alex, but I don't live in Norway and I don't have one of these breeds of dogs. You know, I hear you, but this is a really important consideration and development that is going to affect you 
and really you should care about if you love your dogs. And the reasons are this, breeding our dogs to look cute simply because of their looks rather than their health has really led to all of these problems. And it is not by any means just these breeds of dog that are affected. It's important that with any breed, whenever you're looking to, to get a new puppy, bring a new puppy, a new rescue dog into your life, um, or if you're thinking about what breed is best for your family, then you need to consider the health so that you know the potential problems that they might be affected with later on in life. Now there's two reasons for that. One, you can keep an eye on them and you can get them the treatment and give them the care or even prevent them in the first place as much as possible just through this awareness. But also you can kind of plan your finances because sometimes these conditions can cost an awful lot of money. If we're thinking of this airway problem that I've spoken about in our flat faced dogs, then they can need surgery to open up those airways and that can cost several thousand dollars if we're talking about back problems for you know our dachshunds our sausage dogs for example they are really prone to slip discs and becoming paralyzed and if you're talking about surgery for that you could be talking about 10 plus thousand dollars so you really need to be aware of these problems equally if you're aware of them you know that if you keep your dachshund a nice slim healthy body condition you're going to reduce their risk of getting those back problems so it's really important to know it also means that you can select and you can support breeders who are breeding for the health of their dog rather than just for the extreme looks that are becoming more and more popular because of all these images that we're being bar bombarded with in advertising and across social media. We can be looking, for example, for pugs with a slightly longer nose that is going to reduce their risk of airway problems, of eye disease, of back problems. You know, we can really be supporting those breeders who are wanting the best for their progeny. And the consequences of not doing this are that more dog breeds may well be banned. Other countries are looking at similar bands of breeds. We're also looking at pugs, chihuahuas, French bulldogs. You know, there is a, a long list of dogs that really are struggling because of how we as humans have interfered and manipulated their breeding. And you can find out just how bad things have got for the French bulldog by checking out this video linked on screen. So click there and I'll see you in the next one. But until then, I'm veterinarian Dr. Alex. This is Our Pets Health because they're family.